This is the end of the line for our dugouts, the expedition's base camp, a stretch of bare rock at the foot of a rapid. The crew is finally complete when Delano arrives with the North American balloon pilots who have flown with him for many years, Kathy Wadsworth and her brother Bill. The second chopper arrives, piloted by Delano's friend and business colleague, Cruz Segala. Segala's machine is a modest helicopter, like a VW bug with rotors. And those of us who have flown in it before refer to it not altogether affectionately as the egg beater. Segala has been kind enough to fly his helicopter as backup on this expedition, a crucial role out here so far from help. The first job is to get the gear on top. If we could set it up so we don't have to set it up up That's there. That's what we're talking about doing. He, he can pick the whole thing up. That's uh, 700 pounds. He can take uh, 800 kilos. Well, then we're all set. 1,600 pounds? Francisco Pacheco listens to the discussions about weight. Francisco is one of the hottest helicopter pilots around and one of the most experienced. But his job today is simple. Well, plan for the day is to get everybody up on top of the Tepuy so we can sleep there tonight and take off early morning. We should have all the flight equipment ready for the chopper to take it up. Okay. Down here, a pilot who takes no risks would be useless. One who is foolhardy would be dangerous. Kathy Wadsworth can operate on that thin edge between caution and daring. And that's why Delano, as the expedition leader, has made her senior pilot on this trip. Francisco heads for the summit with the first balloon basket. Kathy will be on the second trip in the egg beater with Segala. She'll reach the top in time to pick the best spot to drop the basket. It will take most of the day for the two helicopters to ferry all the people and equipment to the summit. I start to pack up my gear as Segala begins to take off with Kathy. Something's wrong. Instead of lifting off, Segala's chopper has bounced down the rock. He tries again. I really thought that the next thing was going to be an explosion and that was going to be it. Crew's got the chopper to come down just before the river, and I guess it must have been pretty shaken because I, I just kind of sat there, you know. It was like, well, okay, nothing blew up, so I guess we're going to be <laughs> all right, you know. It was my sister in, inside of this machine that was just completely out of control, and, and there wasn't a thing that any of us as spectators could have done to save that situation. The helicopter jumping in the air again and and starting to twist and, and the tail hitting bushes and rocks and, and finally the helicopter doing a revolution in the air underneath itself and come crashing back down to the onto the rocks again and and it was sliding as it was doing this it was sliding towards the river and, and the storage tanks for the fuel for the helicopters was next to the river and and if you were uh, writing a script for a movie, you couldn't have a more disastrous situation unfold. But it wasn't a movie. Okay. We've had a problem with the other helicopter down here. Okay. You just dropped the baskets off in the best looking place up there, okay? Francisco doesn't know it yet. But his is now the only helicopter on this expedition. Back here on the river, this chopper is down for good. Nobody knows what caused the crash, 
For some reason, in the heat and humidity, it wasn't developing full power. Sagala is the center of good-natured concern. Immediately, the ground crew begins debating how this wounded chopper can be gotten out of here. Meanwhile, the airlift of people and gear continues. It seems strange, but very quickly the crash is incorporated into the momentum of the expedition. It takes some courage for Kathy to climb into another helicopter so soon after the accident. I'd say that probably was the most intense right afterwards when I had to get in the guacamaya and, you know, and fly up. And for those few moments, I just really wasn't comfortable for a while. On the summit, in the last hours of daylight, the expedition pitches camp. Maybe 800 feet above. We keep that way, go there in the end of the village. All of us on the expedition have flown around the Atana in planes and helicopters. But now from our balloon basket, it feels different. There's a sense that time has slowed down. Nothing separates us from a landscape that looks as if it's been created yesterday. Very nice, huh? I don't know what it's like in Bill's basket, but in ours, there isn't a lot of conversation as we drift over the jungle. It's as if Jorge, Kathy, and I are mesmerized by a landscape that's so coherent and vast. The great carpet of rainforest stretches to the horizon on every side. Elsewhere in the Amazonian region, this priceless resource is being cleared and logged, but the jungle beneath us is still intact. It's a small corner of one of the last natural wonders of the world. As we start to graze the treetops, we're heading directly for Bill's balloon. If the flight has been spectacular, this landing is literally incredible. Let me tell you, this doesn't happen often. I can't believe we landed in the same exact place. <laughs> Was that planned? The way the winds were going and the way they were so fickle on the surface and up above, it was hard to tell where we were going to end up. It took us almost a half an hour just to maneuver ourselves to get into this somewhat of a clear spot here. And Kathy looked like she was in a little bit tougher shape because she was out over the jungle more than we were. I'm here. Why? Is somebody want water? 
Yes, I do. Here's fresh water. Okay? How you doing? That's good. Excellent. Is anybody hungry? Oh. We were up for two hours, and uh, I think we've gone about 10 miles, something like that. It was beautiful, and the li landing was perfect. The balloons are down safely. By all rights, this flight should have ended our fascination with the mountain. But we find that adrenaline is contagious, and the Atana seems to have a peculiar hold on us. Remember what it was like to be a kid and see a tree that you had to climb? or a long hill that you just had to roll down? The Atana is affecting us like that. Delano and his team begin to imagine other challenges on the mountain. But on this expedition, there's one last dangerous piece of house cleaning to take care of. Francisco Pacheco, our helicopter pilot, has been the single most crucial member of each of these expeditions. Nothing would have been accomplished without him. And everyone's life has quite literally depended on his flying skills. During the last trip, he flirted with actually entering the cave with his chopper, a dangerous maneuver because the vibrations of the rotor could dislodge the unstable ceiling rocks. But his repeated approaches have convinced him that he can safely maneuver in and out. Testing his own limits, he decides to try. If the first time is a stunning demonstration of precision flying, every flight that follows is no less amazing. The practical benefit is that Francisco can now resupply the climbing team. <laughs> 